Hello. Hello, Chris. Hello, is that Robert? Yes, Chris. Hello. Hi, hi Robert. It's Chris. Hi. Thanks. I'm just sorry about today. It's been a bit of a crazy morning. <laughs> That's all right. Thank you. Um, I, f I forgot which congregation in Carlisle are you? Are you Eden or West? Yeah, well, there's three congregations in Carlisle Eden. I'm in Carlisle Eden. You're in Eden. Okay, thank you. Okay, um... I've been looking at the book, Enjoy Life Forever. I mean, chapters one to six are rather well written, perhaps a bit simple, um, you know, on the sort of light side. Um, yeah. And it doesn't go into a lot of depth, but very yeah. interesting. Um, the first question I have is in lesson seven on page uh -huh. 29. What is Jehovah like? Yes. Um, it's very brief. Paragraph one. It says, God is a spirit, John 4, 24. Jehovah does not have a physical body. He is a spirit who lives in heaven, a place that we cannot see. Well, I'd be crazy to disagree with that. Obviously, Jehovah is a spirit. And the context for spirit in that context is uh, someone who is immaterial. The word spirit there in that context is someone or something who is immaterial. In this case, it's a someone. It refers to God. Yeah? Yeah. Now, I'm not, I'm not interested in active force, and I'm not interested in the Holy Spirit as the power of God. It, Luke one thirty five five clearly states that the Holy Spirit is referred to as the power of God, so I believe that also. I'm not interested in active force. All I want to know is, the Bible says that God, meaning the Father to Jehovah's Witnesses, is a spirit, John 4.24. Do you believe the Holy Spirit is a spirit, or is the Holy Spirit not a spirit? Okay, we'll go back to the first one. Um, God the Father, we don't, we see God as in the Almighty God. Uh, the Almighty. The, there is only one God, the Almighty. And he has a son who is Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is God's active force. The active force is the power. I'm not interested. The, S seriously, I'm... I'm I, I'm not interested. I just want to know, is the Holy Spirit spirit or is the Holy Spirit not spirit? I'm not interested in active force. I'm not interested in the Trinity. Uh, I just want to know, is the Holy Spirit spirit or is the Holy Spirit not spirit? I and mean, if you don't know the answer, we can just save time and move on. Right, well, I can come back to you on that one. Cause yeah, I, sure. I don't really have your question. It's not a person. It's not. It is a spirit, yeah. Okay, so you've answered the question. You've said the Holy yeah. Spirit is spirit, which yeah. I would agree with. Would the Holy Spirit be the same spirit as the Father, who you call Jehovah, or are they two separate spirits? The spirit is God's active force, and I know you don't want to accept that phrase. Can I ask why it is you don't accept that phrase? Well, the term active force is not found anywhere in the Bible in the Greek or Hebrew okay. text. So what, what you what you wanting me to do then to to go and have a look at the translation because that's really the question you're asking me. No, it's no, it's it's not. I I, I, I it's it's a sidetrack. I'm not interested. When you use active force, you use it in the sense of the Holy Spirit being the power of God. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Right. Luke one thirty five says the Holy Spirit is the power of God. I I agree with that. That's yeah. not my question. My question okay. was, is the Holy Spirit spirit or is the Holy Spirit not spirit? You said the Holy Spirit is spirit. So my yeah. follow up question is, is the Holy Spirit the same spirit as the Father or are they two separate spirits? Well, because if the Jesus, Father is a spirit and if the Holy Spirit is a spirit, then either they're two separate spirits or they're the same one spirit. Well, interestingly, Jesus said that he would send a helper in the form of the Holy Spirit, didn't he? My question Sorry. is, is that helper, the Holy Spirit, the same spirit as the Father, or are they two separate spirits? No, the same. They're what? They're the same. Same one spirit? Yeah. Okay, I would agree with you. Yeah. Right, I have no problem with that at all. I would agree with you. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father, John fifteen twenty six. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. If the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father, then he cannot be 
in his very nature, his very being or essence, what we call ontology, different to the Father. So the Holy That's Spirit right. must be the same Spirit as the Father. Um, I, I would agree with that. I'm a very firm Trinitarian, so that's what Trinitarians would affirm, and that's what I would definitely believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's, that's great. Um, the second question would be, you can be Jehovah's friend in the next chapter, chapter 8. Let me just go back, sorry, to the, the previous thing that we discussed about God's Holy Spirit. You said that the Spirit is the Father. No, no, no. no. They're distinct no. persons, but yeah. uh, they are distinct and they're eternally distinct. But the yeah. what we call the ontology, the very being, the essence, the nature of the Father and the Holy yeah. Spirit would be the same Spirit. Father, yeah, because... Son and Holy Spirit are the same one Spirit. They're yeah, Jesus, three separate spirits. Yeah, so to clarify that, when Jesus said that he wanted his disciples um, to be one, just as I and the Father are one, he referred to his disciples being at one with them in spirit. Well, you actually need to read the verse, which is John 17, 20, yeah. 21. <clears throat> I'll read yeah. from verse 20, if you like. Uh, I'm I actually just... Minute, so you'll have to give me a second yeah. while I get that Bible one second. Which was the script again, sorry, John? John, John 17, 21, but I think you need to read from verse 20. Yeah, okay. Yes, that's the They may all be one. Okay. Just as you, Father, are in union with me and I in you. They, they may be in union with us so that the world may believe that you sent me. So wh where are you reading from? One is spirit. No, what what verse are you well, reading from? Psalm seventeen twenty one. Seventeen twenty one. The word union well, is not, not in the Greek text. Yeah. Sorry. The word union is not in the Greek text. <clears throat> uh, Let me look at the Kingdom Interlinear translation. I'll go on to jw.org and just take a quick look. Yeah, sorry, I'm. <laughs> I'm not professing to be the font of all knowledge, but I don't have a kingdom Greek interlinear with me at the moment. <laughs> I, I don't have it with me, so I'm going to yeah. jw.org. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh dear. Sorry about this. Online Bible. Right, there we are. Kingdom interlinear translation. John, uh, I've got translations in front of me. I've got the Byington translation, the King James, the American Standard Version, the New World Translation, that's Study Bible, and the Kingdom Interlinear. I'll just look up now. I'm looking at the Kingdom Interlinear translation. Uh, yeah. Pater N. Father in me and I in you. Right, the word union is not there in the Greek text. That's an addition to the Greek text that isn't in the original Greek text in union. Okay, so the next verse, it says, Verse 22. In verse 22. Yep. It says, um, so let me read it out of the King James or whichever. American Standard, or um, it says, I'll just pick one of those, it says, And the glory which thou hast given me, I have given unto them, that they may be one, even as we are one. So, Okay, what's your point? My, my point is that, um, that we're obviously trying to convey a, a thought here, a, a unity of uh, an alignment of thought. A unity of purpose. Uh, Yes. Yeah, um, it's yeah. unity of purpose. It's, it's not saying that the apostles are of the same nature of, as the Father. 
and well, Jesus. Okay. He's not saying that Jesus, the Father and the Apostles share the same nature. Um, I believe I'm looking at the text now and I'm not a Greek scholar that we uh, are we one. That's the very last word in verse 22. Uh, it's got the rough breathing in front of it and then epsilon nu. So it reads as hen. That's the neuter word for one in Greek. It just means one in agreement. It's used in John 10 30. I and my father are one. And the word yeah. for one is neuter. It means that the father and the son are in agreement. Yeah. But for some for some reason, um, in verse 23, uh, again, they, they say I in union with them, you in union with me. It doesn't say in union. No, it doesn't. I'm looking at the Greek text published by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. It says, ego en autois, I in them. It doesn't say I in union with them. The word union is not in the Greek text. And I'm looking at the Kingdom Interlinear published by the New World Translation. It, it's in front of me on jw.org. The word union is not there. Okay. Um, well, I, I, to be honest, um, I've never really looked at that specific word in that context. Um, but I, I have got other related scriptures that I can look at where, for whatever reason, I'm not a Greek scholar. I don't pretend to be. Nor am I. Uh, I've... But I look at the translation, and um, clearly people far greater and more learned than I am have made the decision uh, to use that word. No, no, no. But somebody's made the decision to make the, to use that word. Not Greek, not Greek scholars. You will not find the phrase in union in John seventeen uh, twenty three or twenty two. You will not find that in in Bibles translated by scholars. Okay, can I ask you a question? How yeah. do you read 3.14? How do I read? Colossians 3.14. <clears throat> I, I think we're jumping all over the shop. I, I thought this was on the Holy Spirit. Um, I prefer to stick to one topic, but okay, I will go there. Colossians... The reason, I, the reason I'm, I'm, I have, I'm sorry that I don't want to jump on. Okay, all right, Colossians 3.14. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. The joint bond of the perfection. Okay. Now, if I ask somebody in anywhere in England what the joint bond of the perfection is, I don't think many people would actually have a clue what that means. If you look at the, group, the King James Version of that scripture, it says, and above all these things, put on charity, which is the perfect which is the bond of perfectness. Again, I'm sure many people would fully understand what that means. But go to the American Standard Version. It says, then above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. I'm just kind of getting there now because I'm trying to see that um, above all things, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. But then when we get to Colossians, um, 314, they have translated it the following, but besides all these things, clothe yourselves with love, for it is a perfect bond of union. Now I accept from what you're saying, if, if I gather this correctly, that maybe perhaps there isn't a Greek word to use the word union. But certainly, um, I think if, if you're looking at it, um, we are trying to get the sense of what's being translated uh, from a original language um, from Greek into um, into English um, and we're not talking ancient Greek aren't we we're not talking modern so one can't it's not a word for word translation the Bible is not a word for word translation because we wouldn't get the sense of what's being translated someone somewhere has to decide what the conveyed message is from one translation. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, I, I, I don't think this is relevant to the Holy Spirit. We were talking about the Holy Spirit. I think this is completely Robert irrelevant. Robert. I don't think uh, it's of any relevance at all. You've simply okay, gone on sorry. to Bible translations. You, you were talk, talking about the word union before, which is It's why. not in the Greek text. I was making the observation that the okay. New World Translation dishonestly adds the word union 
in that passage in John 17. It's not in the Greek text. And I was going to the Kingdom Interlinear translation of the Greek scriptures, the blue edition, which is on JW.org. And it doesn't have the word in union. That's That's been added. <clears throat> um, I don't know why you even quoted that verse in the first place. I don't know the significance for you quoting that verse. It just seems to be a bit of a sidetrack. We were talking about the Holy Spirit. I don't see this as relevant at all. But, but you have the final say on Holy Spirit. I mean, I, I'll, I'll listen to what you've got to say. But then if we move on, I don't want to go back to it five minutes later. You know, if we move on, let just just forget it. Um, you know, let, let, let's just leave it at that, shall we? OK. 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 Thank you. OK. Um, the other chapter was chapter 24. I'm asking my subscribers who live outside of the United Kingdom to phone up congregations, English-speaking congregations in their country on my behalf. I'm asking them to do this. Say to them that you would like to attend a Zoom meeting and then get the Zoom details for me. Get the Zoom ID code and the Zoom login code. And then please give me accurate details of the name of the congregation, which town or city is it based in, what is the name of the state? Don't give abbreviations because I might not understand what you mean. And which which country it is in and the time zone that they use, please. I ask you to do this because I cannot possibly afford to make expensive phone calls outside of the UK on my phone. I couldn't possibly afford to do this. It would it would cost me it would cost me far more money than I get every week just to make phone calls abroad. However, I can make Zoom calls outside of the UK for free. So, all you have to do is go to jw.org, scroll down till you see the picture of the man preaching on the right-hand side where it says attend a meeting, click on that. Then you click on the blue box in the bottom left, find a location near you. And then you'll have a screen, I've got a picture of Cornwall and, and Plymouth. You simply um, click on one of those little um, orange tags. And when, once you click on those tags, then what you will find is it will give you the telephone number for that congregation. I can't afford to phone outside of the UK, but if you live in the same country, you can afford. And you just need to say, I'd like to attend a meeting. Please give me the details. And then you will find that my email address it's at the start of most of my videos. It's also below at the bottom of the screen. Simply uh, email me the Zoom details. But be accurate, please. I'd rather have just one or two details that are accurate than 20, which are confusing to me. I am dyslexic, so please don't use abbreviations. Be clear about the time zone. And remember, I need the congregation name, the town or the city, the state. Don't use abbreviations in the country. Um, because I simply am finding it very difficult to continue this work now here in the UK. So many Je Jehovah's Witnesses have been told not to speak to me. Thank you.